Hello everyone, welcome back to MZ Adventures. My name is Zach and today we are continuing CSI Three Dimensions of Murder. We are moving on to case three of five, I believe. So we are moving on to Daddy's Girl. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series as much as Hello, I am. Again. Your first two cases indicate you have a real gift for forensics. But can you handle a genuinely grisly crime scene? I have one for you. First officer reports a call saying the apartment of a certain young woman is painted in blood. The apartment, and possibly the blood, belongs to a celebrity of sorts, Carrie Louise Canelli, the casino heiress. But there's no body, just plenty of blood. You'll have Sarah Seidel at your side. Sarah knows her way around even the bloodiest crime scene. You better get going. She'll meet you there. All right, so we're off to a banging start, and that's cool that we can actually look around his office. Um, yeah, before we actually get into it, I want to just thank you guys for joining me throughout the series, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I mean, I know some of these cases, or pretty much all these cases that we've gone through have been super long, and I know this series I am doing a little bit different, because... Um, you know, I'm just experimenting with voiceovers and stuff, seeing if you guys like it. If you, if you guys do for these types of playthroughs, great. If you don't, that's fine too. To each his own. Um, just let me know in the comments down below because I need the feedback. Um, if you guys also want me to do face cam, I'll do face cam as well. Um, but that's something in the future, obviously. Um, and I just want to thank you guys for sticking sticking with us um, this far um, as the channel keeps growing and evolving and we're experimenting with editing styles and using different software and effects and trying to figure out our own intro and outros and just things like that and hopefully improving on our microphone quality and stuff as time goes on but without further ado Let's head to this crime scene. And I would say with this, I am not using any mods, trainers, or anything, because I can't. Wow. This is a lot of blood. Be careful not to step in anything. I'll document most of this, but I'd like you to photo anything that looks out of place. I don't want to jump to any conclusions yet. I just want to take in the evidence. Yeah, of course. That's completely understandable. So what we're going to do then is obviously this freaking pool of blood. This blood pooling is undisturbed. Strange. If a struggle happened with this much blood everywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice little swab. A lot of blood for one person to lose. We don't have a body, but I'm thinking we should have. Freezer is empty. Not even a frozen pizza or TV dinner. What's this? Let's collect this. Looks like some old impressions on the pad. Let's see if you know how to process it in the field. see a penny Lucy Lucy huh sure let's collect the keys that's not right for this
see what we need to get. Some kind of waxy substance. Yeah, got it. Take a picture. We have a print overlapping the door, which means somebody left after the crime went down. Back. Drawer still locked, but this indentation probably means somebody jimmied it. Right. Oh, look at that. All right, we got the fingerprint. Something big and heavy was dragged through here. Body, maybe. And some of my mind have thought that there was something like over here. There's another stain. Somebody was making this window into a door. Perp fleeing the crime scene. Hey. Plastic fragment. I have a guess what this is, but Grissom tells me not to do that. This could be significant. The splash could represent where the first cut happened. Alrighty, let's ask questions now. Who are you? Who are you? Make that, who the hell are you? Las Vegas Crime Lab. Calm down, sir, and answer the question. Sorry. I guess I didn't expect to see a, you know, chick playing cop. No offense. I'm Michael Dubois, Carrie's fiance. I hope you can tell me what the hell happened here. And where in God's name is she? We're going to do our best to determine what happened here, Mr. Dubois, and I'll try not let being a chick impede that. I told you I didn't mean any offense. Wouldn't you be off your game if you showed up at your girlfriend's place and found it splattered like this? Sure. Uh, we found footprints. Are they yours? I was freaking out, looking every place, including the damn ceiling for her. Could have left footprints just about anywhere in here. Take them. Here's, here's the key. Fucking thing needs to fucking hurry up. Come on. Two more. That's it. Okay. Good enough. Gotta spray it. Come on. A couple more. There we go. Let's do this. Nice work. When was the wedding supposed to take place? Three months from tomorrow. I mean, Carrie was picking out her damn wedding dress just the other day. When 
was the last time you saw just yesterday in my her. apartment we had lunch i fixed it for her. kind of an amateur chef I'm not the sexist pig you think i am god what could have gone down here can you test this blood and see if it's carries or something can't think of any enemies your fiance may have had carrie are you kidding don't pay any attention to that crap in the tabloids carrie's a sweetheart a living angel i hope to hell she still is was there anything unusual about her behavior yesterday no she was just carrie if anything she was in a better mood than usual sometimes she can be kind of quiet even uh i don't mean this in a bad way uh, mousy but she was all smiles and laughs when did you arrive on the scene uh, around midnight i was expecting carrie to be here when i opened the door i, I freaked out search for her nothing and i called the cops asap did you have an appointment with with her appointment you think i make appointments with my own woman i was just dropping by I do that all the time she likes it me surprising her like that did you touch anything well, I've been here a hundred times, so I've touched things in this apartment a hundred times. But not tonight. I'm not a numbskull. Seeing all this blood, I knew something was wrong. Horribly wrong. I had to see if she was alive, so I, ch I checked the rooms quickly, and I, I think maybe I, you know, stepped in some of that blood. Almost would have had to, but after I checked, I called the cops and stayed right here until you came. Did you notice anything suspicious leaving the premises? No. If I had, I wouldn't be wasting time here talking to some female lab assistant and her lapdog. Do you have regular access to her apartment? I told you I was her fiance. I had her key, she had my key. That doesn't mean we don't respect each other's privacy. I knocked before I let myself in, and I only came in because I knocked a long time and got kind of worried. Because if she was going out, I'd know about it. We're that close, you know? And then I saw this nightmare, and I called 911. You know anyone named Lucy? I wish I didn't. Lucy Canelli is Carrie's little sister. Don't think I throw the B word around loosely, but Lucy Canelli, she is one cold, calculating bitch. If you tell me she has something to do with this, don't expect me to act shocked. Why do you think Lucy had something to do with this? When there's a will, there's a way. An old man Canelli made Carrie, his older, more responsible daughter, the beneficiary of his major property, the Double Dip Casino. Even the old boy knows enough not to trust Lucy with that kind of responsibility. And brother was little sister pissed. Where can we find Lucy? Over at the Double Dip. She works there, sucking up to daddy. You recognize Looks this like key? The key to my apartment. I told you, we exchanged keys a long time ago. You never know when there's going to be an emergency or something. Case in point. I'd like to take a DNA sample if that's okay. me out for what? I told you before, I'm your guy where helping find Carrie is concerned. You want to give me a cup to fill? Or? That won't be necessary, Mr. Dubois. A swab will do just fine. Where can we reach you if we have more questions? Over at the Gorman Towers, my apartment. Here's the address. And you people let me know the second you find anything about this horrible mess. I care about Carrie, you know. I really, truly care. Uh, of course you do good sir uh, all the questions we have oh, let's, let's check out nothing here that will help us hey found a necklace Well, I guess we are off to Lucy's office to ask her some questions. Fairly intriguing, yes?
All right, time to ask you some questions. Miss Canelli, we're at the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We understand you've been informed about the situation at your sister's apartment. Yes, I heard from your Captain Brass. I've been expecting you and intend to help, of course, but could we move this along? I'm a busy woman in charge of food services here, and that's a demanding and never-ending responsibility. You don't seem so concerned about your sister. No, I'm not. <laughs> Do you mind if we have a look around? Within reason. The drawers of my desk contain key business documents that I don't care to have rifled through. What can you tell us about Michael? Well, that Neanderthal is wrong for Carrie. He's a controlling jerk, although he's never learned to control his own temper. If this turns out to be something sinister, you may save yourself some trouble if you start with that monster. Hmm. You know anything about this note from your sister's apartment? Doesn't it speak for itself? Our father has been extremely ill, and Carrie has been staying away as if she might catch something. It's reprehensible of her. I love my sister, but her avoidance of responsibility, whether business or family, is a real bone of contention between us. Can we take a DNA sample from you? We need to determine whether the blood at your sister's apartment belongs to her. As her sister, you'd be a partial match, of course. No problem. Just because we've had our problems doesn't mean that I don't love and care about my sister, you know? Plus, it's a good excuse to get your DNA. Has anything unusual happened with Carrie lately? Well, I can't say for sure it's Carrie, but I just discovered that someone was trying to use my visa card on the day she disappeared. And they told me that their fraud protection agents had flagged a suspicious purchase. This has never happened before. It's gotta be Carrie. Hmm, that's interesting. Might be worth having Brass check into it. I don't have anything else to say to you. Well, since we're allowed to look around, we're going to go ahead and uh, do that. So, start with the desk, shall we? Click on that little notebook. Here's an entry worthy of a raised eyebrow. Lucy had an appointment today with her sister at 7.30 p.m. Hmm, interesting. A uh, letter opener. Let's uh, pick that up. Ooh, that looks like blood to me. Was this used for opening letters? Or bloodletting. Already nothing to do there. You have an appointment with your sister at seven thirty today? We were planning to catch a late dinner, yes, but I got caught up in some business errands and got so far behind. I'm afraid you'll find I'm on your books for a speeding ticket at around 8 p.m. Frankly, I was so bent out of shape about it, I just headed back to the office, knowing Carrie had probably been waiting for me. She didn't pick up her cell phone. I'm afraid I just considered that more typically thoughtless, irresponsible behavior on her part. Oh, and that ticket is right here, if that'll help. How did the blood get on the slender opener? Take a look at how sharp that stupid thing is. I should throw the damn thing out as many times as I've cut myself opening letters with it. But it was a gift for my father, and I'm sentimental that way. I don't have anything else to say to you. All right, we're going to be moving on to Michael's apartment now. Ask him some follow-up questions and take a look around his place. Hopefully. Hopefully we can do that anyway. Like you have a knife missing. All right. Do you have anything that belongs to Carrie? Tell you what, I'll throw you a bone. See those sunglasses over there? Nice glasses. Not quite right for you though. Don't be silly. Those are for a female. They're Carrie's glasses. Left them here yesterday. 
Could we borrow them? I'm not gonna stand on ceremony and ask for a warrant or some crap. Let me make it clear. Anything that'll help find Carrie, I'm up for. All right, then. Uh, get the glasses and I gotta sneeze. Um, hmm. Let me take a look at those again. There's this, there's. Yeah. Oh, we can't, I can't do that. All right, fine. Could now be I can from our potential Vic. It has some scalp on it, which allows a DNA search. Without a victim, this is our best reference to determine if it's her blood. I I need to look at those glasses to get off for some substance. Yeah, that, that, there it is. This use the swab. Sunscreen or something. And now we gotta process all this stuff, so gotta go to the lab. Start with the DNA. Uh, we're gonna be doing blood on the floor. With the hair. Blood definitely came from one person. Okay. And from sofa. Michael's. That's Michael's not DNA. Good. No match to Dubois. This could mean a number of things. Worst case, she was also sexually attacked. All right, blood on the floor. Michael's shoe. Now we gotta compare Lucy's DNA. We have a partial allele match between the blood at the crime scene and Lucy's DNA sample, which is what you'd expect with siblings. And since Mr. Kennelly has no other children, the blood at the scene belongs to Carrie Kennelly. Then her blood with this. Okay, so Lucy really did cut herself. And how goes the case of the bloody apartment and the missing heiress? Lots of blood. Few suspects, no body. Blood's Carrie's all right, matched up with her sister. But if she's lost literally gallons of blood, she has to be dead, doesn't she? Well, as Sherlock Holmes once said, when you have excluded the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. But isn't Sherlock Holmes a fictional character? Probably. Yes, but in other words, he says, uh, keep keep your mind open pretty much to anything um let's go to the trace analysis and let's start running these fingerprints fingerprint i want to do is do the fingerprint on the desk Right. Nope. 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 Yep. Match to the charming fiance. Not a surprise since he had his own key access, but this is surprising. Dubois had a record. Assault charge two years ago. Barroom incident? Sounds like he had a temper. Convicted, but suspended sentence due to first offense. 
All right, now let's take a look at the shoe prints. Got to compare them, so. Over there, good job. Documents and photos. Oh, let's do Michael's shoe print, wherever that is. Thought we took a picture. Don't we have his shoes? Yeah, Michael's shoe. There we go. With. That. Shoe and the floor print match, meaning Mr. Dubois exited after the blood was on the floor. It's exit. Now let's go to the L microscopy. So. Let's take a look at the necklace cut cleanly from one side, maybe during a knife attack. Interesting. Okay, exit back. Now we need the assembly table for the document. And now I gotta assemble this bad boy, so amendment, something, something amendment. Looks somewhat right, I guess. Maybe not. Uh, There we go. The will and testament. This piece right there goes here. Actually, this is kind of fun. Uh, that piece goes there. This piece goes there. Last but not least. Stunner. Mr. Kennelly is leaving the double dip to Carrie, not Lucy, even though it's Lucy who's worked her tail off for him. This is a motive. Now we need a chemical analysis machine. Because we still have that piece of plastic. It's a common brand of trash bag. So this means a bag was dragged out through that window, perhaps heavy enough to cause a snag. Was the victim taken out like trash? We need to do... Wax, all right. Ski wax, actually. And you can make an impression of a key from this stuff. Perhaps somebody needed a spare key from Mr. Dupois' apartment. And um, yeah, I did not mean to do that. And the residue. Liquid concealer. This is a cosmetic of choice among abused women. Green offsets the red and blue of a deep bruise. And this residue on the shades could mean they're concealing a shiner. Righty. Now let's go to brass. You know the kind of pressures we get from the string pullers in this town. Right now, Jacob Canelli, from his deathbed, is providing a healthy dose. This kind of grief we don't need. So we need to find out what happened to his daughter fast. Now, what do you need? Can we verify the call from 
through Lucy from the visas for our department. Story is confirmed. Someone made an international call to a hotel in Aruba using Lucy Canelli's visa card. Visa flagged it as being outside of her normal spending pattern and notified her that it could be fraudulent. We could have a break here. If it was Carrie who made the charge locally, then she was still alive at 5.04 this evening, improving our timeline. You check if the speeding ticket is legit. Take a second to access interdepartment records. And here it is. 8.12 p.m., 60 miles per hour in a residential zone. She was in one hell of a hurry to get someplace. This confirms she didn't meet her sister at 7.30. But that doesn't clear Lucy of murder. Not when we don't even have a time of death or a body. Can we bring Mr. Canelli for Stop questioning? Him. He's very sick and very rich. Those are hard hurdles to get over, and getting over them will take time. If we can crack this thing without going there, we should. Great, let's go back to the victim's apartment. This seems unnaturally far from the rest of the blood. I believe I got that the first time, but whatever, just cover our butts. Oh, and then we got to go to the DNA machine here. Compare the hair. Hair with the blood found on the wall. Just go to the morgue. I don't fucking know what else to do right now. Well, I hear you don't have a body for me. Not yet, anyway. But maybe I can give you some insights based on some photos. I'd be happy to run some tox reports if you give me blood samples as well. What do you think caused the smear on the floor? Obviously, I can't give you a definitive answer. But the size is right to have been made by dragging a body across the floor. What do you think caused the spatter on the this wall? This small droplet spatter usually indicates a blow from a fist or other blunt object. Can you estimate the amount of blood At loss? At least half a gallon. Could be more. And since it all came from one person, that person is almost certainly deceased. What do you think was the cause of death? The loss of blood? Yeah. Uh, but there's one striking anomaly, however. It's highly unlikely a victim with that kind of wound could remain conscious long enough to spread so much blood around so many places in one apartment. One theory would be the killer held onto the victim, dragged her around the place, which would give us one very bloody perp. You're on tox report on the blood from the no wall? No problem. Check back later. You're on tox report on the shoe? No problem. Check back later. You're on tox report blood from no the floor? No problem. Check back later. Anything else? Interesting item. Not sure what to make of it. When looking for cause of death, I noticed a large portion of the blood was crystallized. Few things can cause this, including severe low temperatures. I wouldn't be surprised to find the body went through some form of freezing. Oh, you can give us? All right, let's head back to Lucy's. Talk to her. You know, you know if your sister has seen anyone other than her fiance. Haven't I made it clear? We're oil and water, my sister and I. We are not close. And she wouldn't tell me her dress size, let alone share the details of her love life. Wait, actually, there is one thing that does come to mind. A few months ago at the hospital, Carrie was making one of her rare visits to see how dad is doing. And I was struck by how she and this male nurse were, well, almost flirting. You know if Carrie had any enemies or stalkers? Not that I know of. Again, we're not as close as most, or anyway, many sisters. Still, she was in the tabloids, so a stalker would be possible. Of course, that fiancé of hers behaves like a stalker. Does that count?
you know, if Michael ever hit Carrie. Look, I told you, Carrie doesn't share intimate details with me. But she has terrible taste in men. Controlling jerks, one and all. And she's been knocked around before. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. She's a serial victim. Did you ever see any signs of bruises recently? No. But my sister doesn't exactly go easy with the makeup. She's a pretty young woman, but insecure. And cosmetics are just another thing for her to hide behind. We've read your father's will. Really? Well, it makes for humorous reading, if you're into irony. So much for hard work and dedication and family. I'm taking it in the nethers, so that Daddy can help Carrie grow up and settle down. You sound pretty upset about it. Wouldn't you be? But I'm not worried. Carrie hasn't ever shown any interest in the family business, and she'll come running to me for help when the time comes. You've been unsaid enough to want to hurt I your told sister. You, she'll be in over her head and need me. Why should I hurt her? Or do you mean kill her? <laughs> right. I slashed my sister to ribbons in her apartment over this. Sure. That'll put me in solid with my father. Well, that note you left did sound like a threat. You won't see a penny? Look, I don't want this to get out. It's confidential. That time I said would come when she'd come running to me for help? Well, it already came. Carrie was ready to hand the casino over to me. You have any proof? You want it in writing? Carrie's writing? Sure. It's right here. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say to you. Well. We're going to the hospital then. Going to talk. So you could, sir. Are you Alex? Yes, I am. Now we know who I am. Who are you? Vegas Crime Lab. We have a few questions. Do you know Carrie? No. Aren't you the nurse? Of course I am. And I know that his daughter is Carrie Canelli. She's had her picture in the media enough. And I may have spoken to her in passing when she's come to see her father. Though the younger daughter, whose name I forget, she comes around more frequently. But when you ask if I know the young woman, I can say that a male nurse and a casino heiress do not normally run in the same circles. Are you sure you don't remember her? The younger sister whose name slipped your mind? Her name is Lucy, and according to her, the last time Carrie visited her father, you were more attentive to Carrie than to the patient. <laughs> Well, that's an absurd assertion. Now that you mention it, and, and keep in mind how many patients I deal with in a day, much less a week or a month, Carrie Canelli was sort of friendly to me. Look, I really don't know her, but she did call me here at the hospital once. But it didn't go anywhere. We, uh, we live in different worlds. You know she's missing? missing? Why, no. No, I didn't. That's sad news. I mean, she seems sweet and unaffected, considering her background. But you should understand that Mr. Canelli's condition is worsened and he was recently moved to another hospital where he could receive specialized treatment. So I haven't seen either of those young women lately. Right, right. Are you holding something back, sir? Hey, I really didn't mean to be evasive. It's just, if I were accused of getting familiar with a patient's daughter, I could get in trouble here. I really, truly don't know that young woman, except in passing. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. All right, let's go to brass. We're on a background check on Alex. Looks like Mr. Portison was once picked up at a club where patrons walk the kinkier side. Erotic blood play. Sick as that sounds, Nurse Portison wasn't charged with anything. You can give me a copy of Carrie's recent phone records? Yeah, it's right here. Plenty of calls to and from the hospital, but one was to Alex Portison's cell phone at 4.36 p.m. today, before that call to Visa. Hmm, interesting. Follow up on that hotel. Call that hotel, but they have no listings of Carrie calling or booking a room. Dead end. All right. 
Go to Michael's apartment. What can you tell us about your assault record? Oh, for Pete's sake, did a red flag come up on that ancient history piece of crap beef? Carrie and me, we were at this bar, and some asshole starts putting a make on it. No problem. At first, I tell him, move along, he moves along. Only when I go to the little boy's room, I come back, and there the dipstick is, hitting on Carrie full throttle. I just, you know how it is, just went off on him. He wasn't hurt, not that bad. Got yourself a little jealous streak, Mr. Dubois? Jealousy has nothing to do with it. I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy who stands up for his lady when some panting jackass gets in her face is all. And Carrie, she's a sweet, trusting soul. She could get taken advantage of by some jerk without even knowing it. Till I came along, her taste in men was lousy. Could your fiancé have been involved with another man? Are you trying to bait me? How many times have I told you people we were freaking engaged? What part of Carrie was out buying her wedding dress the other day, don't you understand? No offense, Mr. Dubois. We have to ask the tough questions in a case like this. Well, that's not a tough question. It's a stupid one. No way in hell would Carrie be with any other guy. We're, what do you call it? It's freaking soulmates. Yeah, sounds like it. Would your fiance have a reason to cover up bruises? What bruises? What the hell are you implying? We found traces of concealer makeup on her sunglasses. The kind that make bruises go away on the surface. What, now it's suspicious that Carrie used makeup? She was in the public eye. She had to doll herself up like a movie star. Anyway, you know how women are. I mean, vain and stuff. Carrie handwriting. That's hers, all right. Flowery and feminine. I could spot it across a room. Do you have any idea why she would have wrote this note? Not a clue. But her judgment isn't always, uh, well, let's say she has no particular interest in the family fortune. The truth is, if she didn't have that fortune to dip into, she'd sing a different tune. Her note says, please don't tell. Do you know who it could be referring to? For all to? the tabloid coverage she's got over these last couple years, Carrie's almost straight-laced, sweet to a fault. What that queen bitch sister of hers might have on her, I could not imagine. Okay. Let's head back to Lucy. It's just a non-stop to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. I mean, come on. Do you mind if we borrow your just sneakers? Just because my sister and I aren't close doesn't mean I don't care about her. So sure, but get those back. I jog regularly. It keeps me fit and sane, and that's my only pair. It's my only pair. Well... Like there's a stain here. Let's see if it's blood. Oh, look at that. These shoes appear to have been bleached, but was it to remove blood? Let's go I find out. Else to say to you. Oh, good. We don't have anything else to say to you right now, bitch. Sorry. Let's go to the chemical analyzer. We're getting familiar with this stuff now. Uh. Let's do a search on that thing from her shoe. Well, there are no traces of blood on these shoes. Just a lot of bleach. These shoes were not the ones at the crime scene. Good, so that eliminates her shoes anyway. Go back to the hospital. We've looked at Carrie Kelly. We've looked at our phone records. Which leads us to a few new questions, Mr. Porterson, starting with why did you lie to us about your relationship with Miss Kennelly? What relationship? Do, do you have a relationship with everybody you talk to on the phone? We've become friends, casually, is all. I didn't lie. I just played that down because I knew you'd take it wrong, which you are. I've just, you know, been trying to lend her a sympathetic ear. She can use it after the abuse that bastard boyfriend of hers dishes out. Did she tell you that he was abusing her? Well, no, not specifically, but abused women are always afraid to reveal what's going on. They cover up for the abuser. Hell, you know that better than I do. But I have eyes. Even if I hadn't had medical training, a bruise is a bruise. And all the makeup at all the cosmetic counters in town couldn't conceal those contusions. And her manner, my God, she was scared to death of that brute. 
When did you last see her? Uh, must be a couple days ago. Of course, I talked to her on the phone just today. She was in a bad place where this, uh, I can barely stand to say, marriage to that monster is concerned. Can I have a DNA sample for it? From Listen, you? I, I couldn't be more pleased that you're looking after Carrie's welfare, but if you want my DNA, you'll need to jump through the proper legal hoops. I know firsthand about labs screwing up, and I'd want every I dotted and T crossed before we took that step. Sorry. Fine. Back to the lab again. Trace analysis. Let's take a look at shoe prints. Let me see sneakers. Same brand and size, but the parcel lacks any individual marks. All right. That's all we can do for now. Let's see, go to Michael's apartment again. Ask more questions about the abuse, I'm sure. We have evidence of physically abused Carrie. Is this how you find out what happened to Carrie? Accuse the one who loves her of crap like this? This is slander. And this is America and I... Who said I did? What, that stick-up-her-butt sister of hers? You believe that self-serving psycho? So the charges are unfounded. Listen, this is personal, so I'd appreciate it if... What was your name? Sarah? You're a nice-looking woman. Hey, I don't mean to step over any line here, but grown-ups know about these things. Is that right? I didn't mean any offense. It's just that that icicle sister of hers doesn't understand what happens behind a bedroom door between two people who love each other in a, you know, passionate kind of way. What, you never had a hickey, honey? That line you didn't mean to step over, Mr. Dubois? You just did. Come on, I never hit Carrie out of anger. Hey, I like it a little rough, so does she. She's of age. She's with me of her own free will. I love her, okay? I would never hurt her in a hurtful way that's all i'm gonna say about it mm -hmm. okay fine let's go back to the hospital <sighs> alex can we have well, another time back, it must be to thank me for pointing you toward that scumbag dubois whatever happened to carrie has to be that bastard's fault i didn't think there was any abuse Seems they were into rough sex behind closed doors Strictly consensual. And you're just going to take that abusive son of a bitch at his word. Mr. Porterson, you're the one we've caught in a lie. What makes you more reliable source than Dubois? I have nothing else to say. Well, since you dropped that cup, that's mine now. Starting to think Alex ought to cut back on the caffeine. Let's help ourselves to a cup of Joe. His cup. If we're lucky, we might be able to get prints and a DNA sample off of it. Well, I see a fingerprint. Funny, isn't it? How sometimes a DNA sample is just waiting for you in a public place. Now let's go back to Lucy. Your shoe matches the brand and size of bloody fruit print from so Carrie's my home. my footprint is at my sister's place. Why is that significant? It indicates you were at your sister's after the crime took place. Are you kidding? We're sisters. About the same height and build from our shoe size to our bra size. Carrie and I both had pairs of running shoes like that. As do a couple hundred other people in Vegas who took advantage of the same sale. Just because our daddy has dough doesn't mean we don't like a bargain. You two are trying my patience. I have work to do, if you'll excuse me. I don't have anything else to say to you. Yeah, I kind of figured that. So we're going to go back to the lab. Trace analysis, we're going to do fingerprints. Hey, 
Let's search it. Nope. Nope. Yep. Matches Alex Porterson's hospital employee records. Not exactly a shock. That's it. Hey, where's the fucking DNA? Where's that semen? There it is. Whoa. Looks like the male nurse has been exercising his bedside manner on Carrie's couch. And now we get to go question him. On your DNA on Carrie's Seems couch. Seems like you've been lending her more than a sympathetic ear. Okay, look. I, I know this looks bad, but if you just think about it one second, you'll understand. I mean, do you really think I want that anger management class reject Dubois knowing that I'm seeing his intended? Who knows what that psychopath is capable of? When did you last see her? Well, I, I did talk to her briefly on the phone, but I've been here at the hospital on shift since 8 this morning. Is that all? I have nothing else to say. Okay, now we get to go back to Michael's apartment. Ask him some more questions. It's gonna just be a lot of chasing, ain't it? How your fiance was involved Say with the what? nurse? Did you have any prior knowledge of this? This isn't a topic I care to discuss with strangers. I'm out of here. Well, let's hope he's not on his way to see Alex Porterson and create a new crime scene for us. And much as I'd love to find comb this place, Dubois being gone doesn't erase our need for a warrant. Back to the hospital. What happened to your lip? What do you think happened? And hey, thanks for sharing my secrets with that ape, Dubois. I'm lucky he didn't kill me. In fact, he threatened as much. Said, I'll kill your ass too. Almost a confession. Were there any witnesses? I was alone in the break room when he caught up with me. I just, I just thought he'd get in my face and that would be the end of it. And when he knocked me down, I, I was stunned. He was gone before I could yell for help. I did call hospital security, though. I, I probably shouldn't have. Because having your relationship with a patient's daughter come out isn't so cool, is it? I haven't done anything inappropriate. Damn, you people find out I've been assaulted and climb all over my ass? I, why is it I pay taxes again? Where is Michael now? Fortunately, hospital security called the police, and they caught up with that asshole in the parking lot. You should be able to check on that yourself. If you still think I'm a liar or something. Nah, we're gonna go get a warrant now. Can we bring Michael in for Mr. questioning? Dubois is already a guest in lockup. He assaulted Nurse Portison last night, as you probably already know. Shall we have a chat with the hot-tempered lad? Why did you attack Alex? I didn't attack him. If I'd attacked him, he'd know it. And so would you. I took it easy on that nerdy little creep, hitting on Carrie like that. As opposed to the way you hit on her? Are you saying you had no suspicion Carrie was seeing another guy? Well, yeah, I guess I did. You can always tell when your, you know, significant others got something on their mind. But I wrote that off to pre-wedding jitters. How could I have imagined a toothpick like that twerp Porterson was my competition? Had to hurt. Who could blame you for getting mad? Yeah, of course. Um, maybe it made you mad enough to kill her? Killer? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. I admit I got a jealous streak, but I would never take it out on her. Give a creep like that Portison an ass kicking, sure, but I, I wouldn't even kill a maggot like that, let alone the woman I love, and I do love her. But we don't know she's dead. We're not writing her off as dead, are we? Are you? I know. Exactly where were you before you arrived at her apartment? You're not letting this go, are you? I no. was at home watching TV. Then I went over to her place at midnight. That's all there is to it. 
Anybody see you leave? Probably not. I use the stairwell. If I were in your shoes, I'd want an alibi. Yeah, I would too. Um, anyway, close that up. Hey, Brass, can we get that warrant now? Get a warrant. You got enough evidence for a search. I'll hit up a judge. And let's go to his place. Turn with this knife. Hmm. We've got one child here with no family resemblance. This set of knives came from a high-end cutlery shop. But this other one is just a plain old slice co. Oh, look at that. Bloody surface, serrated edge. Could this be the weapon we've been searching for? Ooh, what's in here? Take a look at the back here. Well, there's something in it. Ooh, we got that. Ready? I can't. There we go. Funny thing to file away, and it wasn't even under S. Ha ha ha. Not to talk trash about Mr. Dubois, but let's get to the lab and see what brand of bag he prefers. Ah uh, ha ha, smart. All right. Go back to the lab. Come on, call an Eliza, please. Take a look at that trash. So Dubois had the same brand of trash bags as the torn fragment we found at the crime scene. They are a common brand, so it's by no means proof. Michael and Carrie had access to these. Anyone else? Right, now let's go to the microscope. Screwdriver. With the... Not the seat. Now we know what tool was used at Carrie's apartment to break open the drawer. Bingo. See yeah, right here. Same thing. Anyway, we need the trace analysis. The prints. Do the folder. Folder. Search it. I guess it's this one. Let's do this one. Close, but no. Try this one. We've got a match to a Nevada Gaming Commission card. Lucy Canelli. Wonder what she was doing around Michael Dubois' apartment. Those two brag about hating each other. The exit. Go to the DNA. Blood from the knife. Uh, 
Sorry. The blood on the knife matches our Vic. I wonder if Dubois will try to write this off to rough sex play. Go to Brass's office, huh? He's on his way to interrogation now. Does this knife alarm you? I know you? you think I'm some sort of mouth breather, but I'm actually a man of means and taste. I said I was an amateur chef. I wouldn't demean my kitchen with cheap tools like that. Maybe so, but that's where we found it. In your kitchen. Maybe it walked in of its own accord. By the way, lab tells us your fiancé's blood is all over it. Well, it may be her blood, but it's not my knife. I go in for the best. I can afford to spoil myself, and I do. Know how I got into your apartment, then? Are you deaf or stupid or both? You shouldn't be looking at me. You should be asking yourself, who put that junk blade in my shiny kitchen? I can tell you one thing. Carrie has knives like that. That sister of hers gave them to her, which shows you how little that bitch really cares about her. Lucy probably just lifted them from the double dip. It's the kind of low-end cutlery their restaurant uses. Well, we'll ask about that. Who could have accessed your apartment to place the Other knife? Other than Carrie and me? I don't know. You'd have to check with the building manager. The janitor. Found a screwdriver in your apartment. Someone hid it in a file folder. It was used to pry open a desk drawer in Carrie Canelli's apartment. Looking for something? A screwdriver and a file folder? Why don't you put it back and file it under screwed over by the cops? Why don't you try leveling with us? Or you could be screwing yourself, Mr. Dubois, right into death row. I came in, I saw that bloody mess. At that moment, for some stupid reason, I flashed onto this desk drawer Carrie had always kept locked from me, never tell me what was in it, drove me nuts thinking the woman I loved, the woman I was gonna marry, thought it was right keeping something from me. So I ran to my truck, grabbed my screwdriver to pry the drawer open. I was, I was looking for love letters or some such. Didn't really know, just had to know what was so damn secret. Only it was empty. I shut it. Felt very stupid about it, okay? And then I called the police. So after you got back to your apartment, you hid the screwdriver in a place you thought we wouldn't find it. You thought wrong. Well, we're gonna go get a warrant for our office now. Get a warrant. Compelling stuff. I can call that judge with a clear conscience and get that search warrant. I don't have anything else to say to you. Well, we got a warrant, so fuck off. Hey, doesn't this key look like the one we found in Carrie's apartment? Yep, it does. Well, this is definitely not Mr. Dubois' day. These records show profits from Mr. Dubois' bookmaking operation. Maybe this is the leverage Lucy Canelli was talking about. Go check that filing cabinet. Fairly wide gauge needles. I wonder what she needs these for. Skylar Progressive Hospital. That's where her dad was. Yeah. He wasn't done looking at those. Oh, I see it. 
Hier, aha. Go to the morgue. You run tax report and pull it from this needle. Done. Check back for the results. Again, tax reports back. Clean. No drugs indicated at all. Then what was Carrie using needles for? Question I was about to ask you, but let's go to the lab now and pair the blood. Head over to this DNA machine. The uh, trace analysis computer is the place for that. Yeah, I know. I'm looking for blood. Blood from the needle. To... Look at our sweet, innocent heiress have been putting in her veins. Hey, Grissom asked me to check up on you guys. Crack this sucker yet? Who was it that said curiouser and curiouser? Probably Grissom, quoting Lewis Carroll. What's the latest curiosity? Well, seems Carrie has a thing for needles and the people who have access to them. And to drugs. Initial report from the bloodbath in her apartment was negative. We're about to run this new sample by Doc Robbins. If Tox turns up clean here too, then you need to ask yourself, if our Vic wasn't shooting up, what were those needles for? Well, go to the microscope. Items. Da, 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 da. From victim's apartment. Yes, an exact match to the key to Michael Dubois' apartment. So there was a third person with access. The trace analysis. Fingerprints. Let's do the box of needles, not the item, the freaking trace. They're in the system. I'm going to guess this one. Damn. Damn. Yo. Corson's prints. Not too surprising if this box did come from that hospital. Well, let's go question Lucy. Yep, that hypodermic needle ought to inject some confidence in a judge. Let's go. Why do we have Michael's bookmaking documents? So Why us. do you have them? Need any further convincing that this guy is a total pawn scum? I took them from his apartment, yes, because I wanted something to really show my father what sort of low life his precious little girl was getting ready to marry. A blessed union that stood to taint our family and our business with guilt by association. I'd have thought you wanted to protect your sister from a low life like Dubois. Carrie was past listening to reason, and I don't remember when she ever listened to me. Meek though she seems, she makes her own choices. My responsibility is the business my father worked so hard to build. Where did you get the spare key? Stopped in one day to deliver a copy of my father's will to Carrie, only she wasn't in. I have a spare key for her apartment for emergencies. Whatever squabbles we might have, we're still family. Anyway, I went in and stumbled across that spare key to Dubois' apartment. Thinking fast, I went out to my car and got some ski wax out of the trunk, made an impression, and had a key made that very afternoon. So you helped yourself to a good hard look around his apartment. The guy is slime, and you know it, and I know it. I knew damn well I'd find something on him. Frankly, I expected to find drugs, but... What I did find works just as well to demonstrate what an amoral loser Carrie hooked up with. You plant the knife? Plant a... 
No, no. I didn't go there to plant anything. I just looked for evidence of his low-life character. So you had a key, and you knew Carrie was getting everything in your father's will. Perfect opportunity to get rid of Sis and claim your rightful share of the family fortune, especially with that scumbag fiancé just waiting to be fit for a frame. Listen carefully. Carrie and I have had our problems. I don't like her, okay? But she's my sister, and I love her. I would sooner kill myself than harm her. And anyway, why would I? She already signed the casino over to me. Why do you have a needle with traces of your sister's blood? I found those needles at Carrie's place when I was dropping off the will, remember? They disturbed me, obviously. If she got herself involved in drugs, I'd have to... I don't know what. Certainly, I intended to confront her about it. Is that why you left that note? Well, I was pretty angry. I figured with all the opportunities Carrie had heaped upon her in her short life to get involved with drugs, and that's what I assumed. Though I suppose it could have been an illness or something. Anyway, I was bent out of shape, out of concern for her. I don't have anything else to say to you. Well, let's go to the hospital, though. Missy found needles from this house when Carrie's apartment. Why? How should I know? She could have taken them from the hospital on one of her visits to her father, couldn't she? Your fingerprints are on the box. I work at the hospital. Could be a coincidence. I wouldn't put it past her, getting in my locker and taking them from there. Keeping needles in your locker, that's standard for a nurse? Hell, I keep all kinds of things in my locker. Not storing, more like dropping stuff off when I'm on my way to here or coming from there, you know. We're talking employee locker here at the hospital? I uh, suppose we are. No big deal, right? Don't you have a locker at work? No, it just means that we get to go and get... I have nothing else to say. Okay, so every time they pause and go twisting like this. Okay, so now we need to get a warrant for that locker. And get a warrant. Nice work. Time to breathe some fresh air into that locker of his and see what he's hiding. I'll call a judge. You. And just like that, we have a warrant. I have nothing else to say. Looks like you do, because this would be a locker, would it not? Right. Like you got a shoe here. Look familiar. Very familiar. Side smells like blood. A lot, of, a lot of evidence went into you, Alex. Not looking good for you. I have a feeling you did it. But let's just go to the lab to confirm everything. Start with the DNA machine. Look in the clothing. There's blood on the floor. Definitely Carrie Canelli. But what did Alex do with the body?
This may have started out as a tomato juice jug, but it wound up filled with another kind of red. Go to the chemical analyzer here. I do a search on that trash bag. No surprise here. This is the bag that left a torn piece on Carrie's windowsill. All right, now I need to go to trace analysis to the shoes. Bloody sneakers with the photo of Maybe our victim was trying to escape out the window. Now let's go to brass. Like Grissom says, blood tells. And all the telling stems from Alex Portison's locker. Let's talk to him. Why are there items soaked with Carrie's blood in your locker? I'm sure you could come up with some really interesting lies for us, Alex. But let's try the truth. It should be interesting enough. They're Carrie's clothes, all right. Carrie's blood. It's all Carrie's. Where is Carrie Canelli? If you and Carrie ever really were friends, cut her family a break. They deserve the truth. Motel across town. You left her body in a motel room? It wouldn't have taken us long before we found her. The smell alone. You don't get it. You're just not that smart. I'll work real hard at it, Alex. Educate me. She's not dead. Carrie Canelli is not dead. Not dead? All that blood. You mean you haven't put it all together yet? I mean, you found the jug and the needles, right? I didn't kill Carrie. Carrie killed Carrie. Are you prepping an insanity plea? You have to understand. Carrie was born with a silver spoon, but a tarnished one. She's pretty, and her father is famous, and that made her and everything she did tabloid fodder. She had this thing for bad boys, and she took more beatings than a Persian carpet. Her life in a fishbowl really, really got to her. She wanted a simpler life, but her daddy wanted her to take over the casino, a business Carrie hated. Why Mr. Kennelly refused to consider Lucy, who for all her faults had worked hard for him, I couldn't say. Maybe Lucy wanted it a little too much. And one day, Carrie woke up and she had a dying daddy waiting to burden her with more responsibility than she could ever face. Not to mention a sister who hated her guts and an upcoming marriage that promised to make her the battered wife poster girl. Lucy, her father, Dubois, they all underestimated her. Behind those blue eyes and that placid personality, Carrie is a clever girl. And she knew she couldn't just leave or else Dubois and her father would come looking for her. She figured she only had one way out to fake her own death. It would require some minor plastic surgery and a change of hair color, and a lot of planning and a hell of a lot of nerve. But she relished the thought of putting one over on all these control freaks just ruining her life. So she met you, a male nurse, with medical knowledge and a sympathetic style, and the two of you saved her blood. It must have taken months. Ms. Seidel, you're a clever young woman yourself. We drew out only a bit at a time. We stored it in the juice jug you found in the freezer. She slowly thawed it, and then she splashed her blood around everywhere, creating a crime scene that would inevitably lead to her being declared dead. Then she brought you her bloody clothes to destroy them in the hospital incinerator. <laughs> yes, but then I screwed up. Got busy at work, not daring to attract undue attention, and haven't had a chance to get those clothes to the incinerator, particularly not with you people underfoot so much. Then you beat me to them. Why do I think it was your idea to use the knife to frame Dubois? Well, you're correct about that, Captain. That wasn't like Carrie at all. Took some real convincing, but I couldn't risk him coming after us, not with his temper. And anyway, I convinced her that her murder would be more real if someone paid for it. And that abusing bastard deserved it. I think she felt good about knowing he would never beat up on a woman again. So what was the plan after you fooled the world into accepting Carrie's death? 
We're in love, Captain. Neither one of us care a damn about the money, just, just each other. She'd pulled enough out of her accounts to give us a start. We're heading, well, we were heading to Aruba to make a new life together. Well, you won't need money while you'll be going, and you won't be together. You see, just because Dubois is a woman-beating asshole, that doesn't make it cool to frame him for murder. What motel and what room, Alex? You investigated every possible angle on this case. Doesn't happen often, but I'm very impressed. Now do it for this episode. So that was a very interesting case. Of course, a lot of back and forth, but that's to be expected. Um, obviously, the first person that um, we would have pointed to would have been, you know, her husband, and then that wasn't the case. And then finding out that he had, you know, the male nurse had an affair with the woman, so Carrie killed Carrie. Oh, no surprise. But anyways, thought it was a very interesting case. We have two more cases for this game. And then we'll be moving on to the next one. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well, and I'm looking forward to these next two cases. Well, that's all the time i have for this episode thank you guys so much for watching as always feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when we upload our videos and feel free to comment down below on how you guys are enjoying the series just say hi uh, if you have any video game ideas or any video ideas that you guys want us to do and as always i'll see you guys in the next video